Hey, Tim Unkert here. In this video, I'm going to discuss Emacs org mode and how I'm using it for my 90 style blog experiment. Now, if you've been following the channel, what I just decided to do basically yesterday, randomly, was to start a blog but have no real styling except that I made the width of the uh, blog about 800 pixels and gave some padding of 20 pixels. You can still read it on mobile because I included a meta viewport tag. Um, and I'm just going to start blogging and putting it up and use Google Analytics and see what kind of traffic I can get from it. Um, <clears throat> you know, by just sh sharing on social media, no paid advertisements, anything like that. What kind of traffic can I get from just aggressively sharing it on my social media channels like this one? Um, the first video, uh, I talked about it. I did, uh, how I was going to make the blog using Vim with Markdown. But I've also considered, should I use org mode? And I thought this was be a great opportunity to go into org mode. So org mode, which is a, a feature of Emacs, one of the, the great features of Emacs, like uh, org mode is one of them, maggots another one of them. Um, but let's, let's take a look at org, the org mode document of this blog. So here's the blog. I put it up on my website. I'll include a link in the description below. Uh, and let me just walk you through how I created it. Here is the org file. Um, now you notice at the head of the file, uh, I have some options up here. And let me make this a little bit bigger for you. Okay. Uh, so at the head of the file, I have some options here and you'll see in the options TOC and then colon nil. Now, what does that do? Well, that basically says when I generate, when I publish this document, whether it be to PDF or HTML or whatever, I don't want to have a, a table of contents. Now, if I did not include that, org mode would include a table of contents. And that's kind of cool, maybe for academic papers. If you're interested in that stuff, I come from a high school math teaching background before I got into web development. So uh, for me, the academic paper aspect uh, is kind of cool. Um, I also have up there is num colon nil. Now, what does that do? Well, if I didn't set that, it would typically number my headings uh, when I convert it to PDF. So I, I want to turn that off because I don't want to have numbered headings. I just want my 90 style blog. Uh, and I want something where I can type it up quickly and convert it to HTML and put it up on the site. Okay, uh, title, pretty self-explanatory, author, same thing. The next three are HTML head. And you'll see I have a little style. Uh, so if I go down here, uh, this is where I have the max width for the body set to 800 pixels. Um, and in this one, I had margin left auto. I actually changed this later on in the HTML file just to include a padding of um, 20 pixels. So I did get rid of that. But if you want to put some style in, some inline style, you can do it this way. There are other ways with setup files, but I haven't really explored that yet. If you know how to use setup files with uh, styles like, I think there's like read the org is a style that's on GitHub that a particular uh, person made. I'm forgetting off the top of my head, but uh, that uses a setup file. If you have some advice on that, I'd be interested to hear it uh, as we go forward with this 90s style blog experiment. Um, <clears throat> okay, below that, I have two HTML uh, head tags, and those are just to put in the Google Analytics tags uh, into the head so it, it reads it. And it did work. Uh, I checked the page last night when I went on the page. It was registering that I was on the page. So the Google Analytics is working. So you can do that to put your Google Analytics in. I have verified, at least on my experience, it is working. Okay, the next thing is the description, uh, which is basically what, what the article is about. Um, that, when it's converted to HTML, it becomes a meta description. Okay, so let's go down and then... Uh, so I went all the way to the bottom. So hold on. Okay. So now I expanded expanded the rest of the document. Um, and so now let's talk about this, um, the little asterisks, and then the creating a worksheet in 
in C. So one asterisk is a H1 tag or a, a heading, the top level heading, right? So in HTML, you'd have your H1 tag and then within your H1 tag, you have maybe a few H2 tags, which were um, nested in, and then those were subheadings, and then H3 would be subheading of that, and so on. Uh, as I understand with orgmo, you have H1, H2, H3. That's pretty much what I would use. Uh, H2 is going to be two asterisks. H3 is going to be three asterisks. Uh, there are ways to uh, promote and demote headings with various key bindings. Um, Maybe I'll talk about that a little bit more in a next video. This next part here um, is just basically a uh, it's basically a um, paragraph, right? I just typed it out and it comes out as a paragraph. Okay, um, pretty self-explanatory there. Go down here. This begin source and end source. I was trying for a code block. Uh, although I really didn't need a code block in that particular case. I was just trying to do it. Uh, I'm still figuring that out, um, but it works okay. Uh, the next part here, another paragraph, and then we have these plus symbols. And let's take a look online. And the plus symbols you'll see correspond to an unordered list. Okay, So that's how you write uh, an unordered list in org mode. You'd each list item would be a, like a plus. I think you can also do it with a minus, um, but uh, the plus definitely works. Okay, another paragraph. Uh, now we've got some headings here, okay? So each of these is an H2 heading, so I can expand this uh, by hitting tab, okay? And you'll see it expands out, and I've got another little code block here. Now, the thing about this, this didn't quite work out because these came all in line. Typically, in this blog is about a C file. Uh, typically, I'd have them one line after another for my C program. Um, there are videos on this on my YouTube channel. Please uh, like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. It'll really help the channel grow. Uh, anyways, all right, so the next part, another paragraph, and then we got some headings. I could expand it, but the cool thing about org mode is if I don't want to work on those sections, I don't have to. But let's let's see if I had anything cool here. Again, another code block. Um, attempt at a code block. It wasn't, it's not quite working yet 100%. Um, okay, what's another tab? Okay, let's go down here and check this out. This is a link. Now, the link on org mode is something that I really find is pretty cool. Uh, since I've already posted this, I'm going to go to the end of this line. Let's let's create another link. And to do that with the Emacs key bindings, you do Control C, Control L. So think about it. Control C, then Control L for link. Okay, so Control C, Control L. And it opens up. And now I put the link down here in the bottom. I hope you can see that down here. Uh, let's just do Google, HTTPS, um, and then slash slash Google.com. And then after that, you'll see down here it says description. Now, the description is where you actually put the text that will appear for, for the link. So for this link, I would have put GitHub. Let's put a search engine, or I could put Google. And you'll see, there it goes. It, it inserted it right in the middle because that's where I had my cursor. Um, but if I had it up here, it would have inserted it here. Okay, So I can go back here, and let's just delete uh, that out and that's a little bit of a mess but oh here, here now when you see what it's doing here um, you'll see that it's uh, I, don't, I don't know what I had written here but anyways uh, you'll see that it's um, It's showing you the original form of the link. So another way you can do a link is you can do a double square brackets and then do the link that way. Okay, that's another way. But I find that Control C, Control L works. Uh, I don't know what I had converting to there. Anyways, it was some heading. Uh, let's let's see what the heading was. Let's try and fix that. Uh, converting to PDF. That's what I had. That makes more sense. PDF. Okay. So again, if I wanted to look what was in here, I just go here and tab. Okay. Uh, and just a couple paragraphs. So let's go down. Uh, got supporting my work. 
Uh, oh, okay, so now I tabbed it out. You can see that. Um, okay, and you know I have some more links here, and that's what I was using for this point. Um, you can also do tables in org mode. So if I want to have a name and something like your age. And then I think I do control C return and it creates a table and it brings it down. Let's say my name is uh, Jonathan. It's not, it's actually Tim in case you haven't noticed. Uh, and I'm 32. I'm older than that, but whatever. Anyway, so I can do control C return and it uh, converts the table nicely. So the table is a nice feature of org mode. And I may be using it uh, org mode to um, to look at the data based on this blog because I, I do want to analytically uh, study it and see if certain posts are doing better. Uh, it's kind of a learning thing for me. Um, just an interesting experiment. Will this 90s style blog get any traffic whatsoever? Okay. Um, and, and that's pretty much the writing of the org mode document. Now, if I want to publish it to HTML, I'll do control C, control E, and I get all these publishing options. So I can export to iCalendar. Uh, I can export to HTML, which is what I'm going to do. E export to LaTeX if you have that package installed. Export to an ODT file if you've used OpenOffice ever before. Um, you know, it, it saves uh, OpenOffice and LibreOffice, some of those free um, alternatives to Word. Uh, it does save, you can save it as an ODT file. You can save it as plain text with uh, as an ASCII buffer, Latin 1 buffer, um, as a UTF 8 buffer. Okay, you can publish. Uh, the current file, current project, uh, choose your project, um, a couple other options I haven't really explored, but you know, if I wanted to export it to HTML, uh, I would do lowercase h and then uh, open. Um, so h o. And so the weird thing is, uh, before when I was using this, maybe someone can comment, is it would open it in a browser but now it's not. So maybe it's a setting that I have. I think it was opening in a browser. Anyways, um, so if I go control X1, let's look at the HTML document that is generated. Uh, so I'm gonna do, get this a little bit larger. So let's do control X, control shift plus. Okay, and now let's take a look. Um, oh, by the way, in case you're wondering what theme I'm using, I'm using Dorsey. And it's important that you use Dorsey in org mode. So when you talk about org mode on your YouTube channel and you put it up on um, Twitter, you can hashtag Dorsey and then hopefully get more tweets, retweets and that kind of thing. So that's very important. Now, as I go through this, um, you'll see it generates quite a bit of things here. So you have uh, the doc type. Um, uh, and, and you notice it's more doing, I think it's doing uh, XHTML. Okay, uh, that's a little bit older. Um, but you get some meta tags here. Okay, then it, it jams a bunch of uh, style into the head of your document. So I'm going down, going down, going down. And this, I don't know if I like that. I, I want less code. Um, all right, and then it has this stuff about the JavaScript tag. Um, you'll notice, actually, if I go up, let me go up here, let me scroll up. You'll notice uh, that we have this Google Tag Manager. That's what I put in the HTML head, so I got my analytics link in there. Um, so that's kind of cool, all right? So now I'm gonna go down, 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 down. Okay, and um, oh, I went back, oh, no, I kept going up, wrong keys, sorry. Okay, so now if I go down and we get into the body of the document, you'll see it uh, is inserting the tags as uh, normal. And now the cool thing is if I go, let me go down to the bottom of this, and let's say I want to format this uh, in a nice way um, so that uh, you know it's formatted and indented properly. Well, I can do Control X H, uh, no, maybe control X, control H. Nope. Uh, I lied. 
Oh, actually, it didn't lie. Okay, so what I can do is Control X H. You notice it changed colors. I didn't see the highlighting. Okay, and then do Alt Control and uh, forward slash, and you'll see it indented all the regions here. So now, if I go through the document, if I go down, let's go down. You'll see that my code is properly indented uh, HTML. So it did. Uh, indent the entire document. So again, that command, sorry, I, I didn't notice the syntax highlighting because I was using Dorsey, hashtag Dorsey, um, that theme. Uh, so I didn't notice the color change. It's more noticeable in some other themes that aren't hashtag Dorsey. Um, but anyways, uh, so what happened is you do control X H that highlights the entire document in Emacs and then do uh, alt control forward slash or control alt forward slash and that will indent the entire document vim has a similar feature where you can highlight the entire document with v uh, visual mode like go shift g to get to the bottom v gg to get to the top and then hit the equal sign and it will indent as well i like emacs uh, the way it does it it's pretty good uh, one thing i want to improve as i move forward with creating this blog is if I am going to use Emacs org mode, and I'm not 100% sure I will, but there's a lot of people talking about it as a good writing tool. Um, if I do, I, I kind of don't want all that code that it generates. I'm sure there is a setting for that that I can change uh, to get it so that it, it, it doesn't generate as much of the HTML in the head of the document and uh, maybe simplifies it a bit. That's what I'm hoping to do. Uh, if you have any idea on how to do that, please comment in the comment below. I love to have a conversation about it. Um, thank you for watching. I'll leave a link to this blog in the description. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. It really does help the channel grow. You can also support the channel by following me on GitHub. I'll leave a link to that as well. And if you want to monetarily support the channel, I do put up some of these worksheets that I'm creating, which is what this blog was about, uh, creating a worksheet with C. Uh, I do put a uh, link to uh, Teacher Pay Teachers. You can check out some of my stuff there. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next one and have a great day.